about this one, Dill Proxying, which I think is really sort of the pinnacle. I was very happy when I got this working. So we're going to use Visual Studio and we're going to make a real Dill Proxy, which is a much better attack than that sleazy Metasploit attack we used. So here, uh, put on the usual junk, make sure you have no antivirus, Metasploit, and all that jazz. All right. And so here we go, an administrator command prompt. I should have one of them. All right. So I'm going to make a directory. Um, I'm not going to use IE. I was using IE user. This time I'm using student. I'm just going to go to um, users. And that might affect you. If you're using my machine, the name of the user is now student, not IE user. So that's perhaps a defect. I should probably fix that in the instructions. Desktop. I'm going to call dill proxy. All right. And then I'm going to Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make that directory. Okay, so make dir. All right, and then cd there. All right, now I'm going to copy bginfo to there. So it's copy. bginfo is a sysinternals tool that doesn't really do much. It just puts some information about the system on the background, but it's a useful thing to exploit. So we're going to do bginfo. 64, which is what we're using here, into the current directory with a dot. All right, so now if I do a directory, I got a directory with nothing in there but bginfo64. Now, I could make an exclusion to exclude this folder. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. I think my machine already has everything excluded, but maybe I'll check it. If I go to Windows Defender, Windows Defender, Windows Security Settings, I think. Virus and Threat Protection, there we go. Okay, and now Virus and Threat Protection Settings. And if I go down here, it'll move. I should have an exception, maybe. Maybe I don't have an exception. All right. Um, doing weird things. Go up, I hope. Up. There we are. It's moving up. Exclusions. There we are. Add or remove exclusions. If I can get it to stay on the screen. Okay. Add or remove exclusions. C is excluded. The whole C drive is excluded right now, which I recommend. Then you never have to worry about this getting in your way. Okay. That'll do it. Yeah, this is being recorded. All right, so now we're going to view the dills in Process Monitor. And these are the two filters we want, which is going to be version.dill and bginfo. So let's go there. Uh, there we go. Here's Process Monitor. So I am sniffing. OK, I'm going to stop sniffing and delete the old stuff. And now adjust the filters. And these first two filters are left over from before, so I'd like to remove them uh, if I can figure out how. Um, is that how you remove? Oh, good. All right. Good. I'll remove the old filters. All right. And now I want path ends with version.dill and process name contains BG info. Okay, so it's path ends with. Um, bginfo? No, version.dill. Okay, good. So version. Okay, so I add that one. And process name contains bginfo. Process name contains bginfo. All right, add that one. Now they're in there. Now I apply and OK. All right, now I start it sniffing and uh, run BG info. So I will start it sniffing. And down here I see numbers going by. That's good. Now I'm going to run BG info from my command prompt.
which is here. Okay, it launches, and I'll agree to this. Then it's going to pop up something. I don't think I really care about this. I think I'll just say okay. Let it run, do whatever it does. All right, it puts this junk on the screen, and this is all I cared about. Now I can see um, what it did. So I'm going to stop sniffing, and... All right, so now you'll see it looked for version.dil. Okay, this one has a different error. If you look for what it did, um, success, success, file lock, and error. The first thing it did was it tried to open it right here in that folder. She used her student desktop, dil proxy. So it tried to find it in the current folder, and it was not found, and then it went and looked in C Windows system. So this invites you to an attack called a companion Trojan, where you put a file in a different location that Windows looks first. This used to be the way everything worked in Windows. It would hunt for everything through a whole path and you could fool it by putting all kinds of things in like the current directory. So it would find files there instead of system files and clearly we can do that for this product. It looks for version.dil in the current folder. So if I put a fake one there, it'll load it and it will never go look for the real one. That's what we're gonna do. So, um, if you make a malicious dil with Metasploit, doing the same thing we did before with a version.dil. I don't think I'll bother doing it live because it's going to fail. We're going to make the same thing. And if you restart process monitor and put that in the current working folder, the fake dil, when you load it, it's going to tell you it was unable to start correctly because it doesn't just load the dil and not use it. It loads the dil and then tries to use it. So it notices that your fake dil is no good. It doesn't contain the required functions. So you can't use that kind of sloppy Metasploit thing we used before. So what you have to do is build a dill proxy. And I thought this is pretty awesome. I've already installed this thing called dill export viewer, which is useful on here. And now, um, after you got that thing going, we're going to load the real version.dill into it. So let me launch dill export viewer. There it is. You, want, you have to get the dills in the real function. So I'm going to um, load functions from the following dill. C Windows System 32 kernel, it says. And I'm going to make that into version.dill, which is the dill I'm attacking. Okay, version.dill, and say okay. And there they are. There's a list of all the functions exported by this dill. Now, that's what we want. Now, I'm going to view HTML report all functions. I'm just trying to get it in a format where it's easy to copy this and move it into my source code. So it's view HTML report all functions. OK and um, Firefox, I guess. All right, now I've got a Firefox page showing all the functions. And all right, um, ah, there's a parser for it, okay. So I'm gonna copy that file into CDL proxy. So let's do that. There's just there's a special tool somebody wrote in Python just to parse that page. There are plenty of ways to do it, but this is the easiest way. So I'll make a directory. Uh, dill proxy. And go in there. Okay, now I'm going to copy C tools report.html, which I guess is where that thing went, and now it gets C dill proxy. Okay. So now if I do a directory, I've got that HTML report. And now I'm going to make a script here. So I notepad parser.py because uh, some of the tools like uh, Ollie Debug has installed Python on this machine. So we can use Python scripts. And here's a Python script I got somewhere. All right, so I just need all that code. P. 
paste that in and save it. All right. And now I think I just run it, but let's just check the instructions. Yep, so now I run it. There's Python, C Python 2.7. All right, run it like that. So here I say, there we go. So C Python, uh, Python on parser and on run on report and put that in pragma dot text. All right, and now we can look at Pragma with Notepad. All right, and this is um, part of the header version for, I think, a C++ file where it's going to create all the functions you need. So now I'm preparing to write a dill that's going to export all the functions that it needs to export to imitate version.dil. All right. And by the way, um, if you look at it, it exports it um, mapped to a function by the same name in a library named version original. What it's going to do is it's going to, whenever it, when I run this thing and it looks for this function, it's going to proxy it to this thing in version origin.dil. So that's the proxy. It exports the functions. On the instructions there, not mentioned exe. I, I didn't see any exe go by. Um, anyway, So we can now create dillmain.cpp, and it's going to have this code. Let me copy the code. And it looks like it's a little bigger than a screen, so I might have a little trouble copying it on this interface, but let's see. Okay. Ah, good. Uh-huh. There we are. The lag is getting me. There. All right, notepad dillmain.cpp. Oh yeah, I used tab completion. That's why it finished adding an exe to it. And you don't need to put in the exe either in Python. I see some comments in the chat. All right, now I got all that stuff. Now I think I need to add more stuff to it. That's why there's a big gap in the code there. Okay, scroll to the top. And where you have that gap, I have to copy the pragma from pragma.txt and put it right there. Insert pragma.txt content there. So I hopefully left my pragma window open. And looks like I did not. That's annoying. All right, I'll have to open it again. I'll need a second administrator command prompt to do that. All right. Let's go to um, dill main. Dill proxy. There we are. And now notepad um, pragma. Okay. All right. Now control A, control C should copy it. Now I go to the other window. There. And up at the top, I put it here. Control V should do it. And it does. All right. Now I think I've got what I need in there, but let's go back to the instructions and see. All right. I paste in the pragma stuff. Now you can. Now we can see how the attack works. If we go down to the bottom, you know, there's an exploit is what's going to run. So when Dillmain runs, it calls exploit. Then 
uh, exploit looks for a thing called payload.back and it runs it. Are all these notepad included in the VM window? Um, it's included in the uh, instructions. You copy it from the instructions, which are on my web page. There, now, so it's going to run a file called payload.bat, and I have to put it somewhere. So this is, this why it's, uh, instead of running that uh, Metasploit stuff that opened a listening shell, I'm just going to execute an arbitrary payload. So let me uh, save the um, notepad files and close them. I'm done with this one. And time to close a lot of junk I don't need. I'm done with this one. I'm going to save it. All right, and close this one. All right, and now if I go back to my administrator command prompt, I can create the payload.bat. Um, and somehow, it's just the right. Yeah, so I skipped to the end of this, hit the wrong button or something. All right. There we are. We were doing this. We were doing that. Okay. Yeah, I want to create payload.bat. We're close to it. There we are. That's what I wanted to see. Now let me get back to my command prompt. Okay. So now I make, I'll run this up a bit. All right, notepad. Payload.bat. And just to show that it works, I'm just going to tag this box. This is triple to script kitty attack. I just take a one and I put it in C users. And a student is the actual name of the user on this machine, not IE user. Student desktop pwn.txt. All right. So uh, that's all it's going to do is make a file on the uh, control S on the desktop, so you can see that it's running. All right, that's my payload. Now, I just need to build it from that source code. So we use Visual Studio and create a new project. And there are some difficult settings in Visual Studio. It took me a while to get this straight. Visual Studio, like most Microsoft products, is very complicated with a lot of weird settings. And you have to find some obscure settings to make stuff work. So I make a new project. Okay, C++ Windows Library, a new project, okay, language is going to be C++, platform is going to be Windows, and project type is going to be library, okay. Now I hit dill, dynamic link library there, I think. Yep, dynamic link library, dill. And next, okay. Okay, now I'll call it version and create. Okay, good. It's doing something. Okay, so now it's created a domain here with some source code in it. And okay, delete all the source code and put in um, the source code from my notepad file. So let me get that. So once again, I'm going to have to open it here, notepad, uh, not pragma.txt, but uh, dillmain.cpp, that one, which seems to have a space and a .txt in it, but it doesn't matter. I sort of fouled up the name, but that doesn't matter, notepad, dillmain, okay. There, that's what I need, control A, control C, I've got the source code. Now I go here in, up oh, trying to find my Visual Studio, which uh, is somewhere. There we are. Now Control A and delete, gets rid of it. Control V pastes it in. Okay, now I got more settings to make. 
So I want to set the configuration to release and the platform to x64. Up here, release and x64. Okay. Now, this is the part that took me a while to get. Okay, got to go to Solution Explorer, right-click Version, and go to Properties. It's going to take a couple of steps here. This is the Solution Explorer over here. So uh, you find Version, right-click it, Properties. Okay, and now you got to navigate through here and find a couple of settings, which can be pretty annoying. So it is set in all configurations, all platforms. Okay, that's the first thing. All configurations and all platforms. Okay. And now it is go to C++ and find code generation. Scroll down the instructions a bit. Yep, C++ code generation. Then I want the runtime library to be multi-threaded. So it is C++, code generation. I want the runtime library to be multi-platform. Multi-threaded, maybe? Let me go back and see I'm doing the right thing. There's a lot of these. It's easy to get it wrong. You want this. Um, well, here it is. There. Runtime library to multi-threaded. Okay. Okay. All right. And there's something else I have to change here. Apply that. And then go to pre-compiled headers. Not using pre-compiled headers. So apply this. Now pre-compiled headers are somewhere here. And we have to not be using them. And I don't really know what this stuff is. I just followed tutorials until I found a combination that worked. A real Windows developer might be able to tell you what all this junk is. All right, then OK. Then build. Right-click version and build. OK. Those are the two settings, so it's OK. Here's version. Right-click and build. And down here it'll see build started and hopefully it'll run without errors. There it is, loading stuff. It succeeded. One succeeded, zero failed. Okay. Now, it shows the path to the compiled version.dil there, and so I need to copy that to the... Okay, so there's the path, and it is... Uh, so what I need to do is Delete the version.dil I have, copy the real version and call it version original, and copy the one from that path and call it version. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is copy this path. There is the path. See user, student, source, version, all this garbage. That's the path to the good version.dil. Okay. Now I can go to my command prompt and do it. So first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, that's the wrong command prompt. Let's see if I have another one. I do. This is the one with my... Oh, they both seem to be here. All right, fine. All right, fine. I'll just uh, move to the right directory. We're working on the desktop. So it's C, users, uh, student, desktop, uh, dill proxy. Okay, now if I do a directory, uh, there is no version.dil in this directory. That's good. Thought I had one I had to delete. That's right. Yeah, I skipped that part where I'd make one with Metasploit. Okay, so all I have to do is I need to copy the one in my clipboard, this mess, to here. There. So now I've got my dil proxy here. But my dil proxy expects to have a good version.dil version of ridge to go to. So I need to copy that one. Um, C, Windows, System. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Okay. 
C Windows System 32 version dot dill. There it was. Okay. And I'll put that here to version a ridge dot dill, which is what my proxy expects it to be named. Now I do a directory. So now when I run this program, it will load this version. It will find proxies in there to lead it to the copy of here, and it will succeed in finding everything it needs, but it will now be adding extra Trojan code to the version. This is a much better attack, and I think that's it. I think I just need to kill the old BG info and run another. Let's see if I can find my instructions. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm in the wrong place. Um, Alt tab, okay. There's my instructions. All right, so I copied the dills to the working folder. Now I restart process monitor and I run BG info. Okay, it looks like I don't have to kill the old one. I think it only runs once. Anyway, I'll try running it again. Let's see what happens. So I go to process monitor. I'm done with this. Done with this. Might as well get rid of all this junk. There's process monitor. So I'm going to, it's not sniffing. So I'm going to clean the old stuff, uh, restart it. Okay, and now I'm going to launch BG Info in my command prompt. Okay, and I don't think it really matters what I did here. I think it, it's done it. Um, see, a bunch of stuff has happened here. And see, now it didn't not find it. Now it loaded it from desktop Dill proxy. Before it just didn't find it and went and found the real one. But here, it did all kinds of things here. So I think that means it tagged my desktop. Let's see. Um, I should find an operation and stuff flag here. And I should see this file in desktop, pwned. Let's see if it's there. If I just minimize everything. Hmm. I don't see it, so I'm thinking maybe it didn't work. Uh, let me go back to my uh, command prompt and see if I made a mistake in my... Um, oh, the, the payload.bat is not here. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe let me check my instructions, see if I can figure out what I've done wrong here. Uh, here. Where was payload.bat supposed to be? Maybe it's supposed to be in this folder. I would think it probably ought to be in this folder. The part where it ran payload.bat, maybe it always goes to that other folder. Let's see what I gave it for the path to payload.bat. There. Um, there's payload.bat. Ah, no, that's the user's. users. Um, right, here we go. Yes, it's looking in the same folder. For, I put my payload.pat in the wrong folder. Um, probably because I just skipped around in the instructions. So I should be able to fix that. Let's go here. Okay. So if I um, do a directory of dill proxy, that's where I put my payload.pat. I think I need it to be here. So I'm going to copy dill proxy payload to here. There. And now, I think I just run it again. BG info. Yep, and that was it. I saw it pop up. It popped up the black box. So I think it just tagged my desktop. I don't think I even need to bother answering any questions or anything. It does it before that box comes up. Whenever this thing moves. There we are. And there it is, pwn.txt. So that makes sense. So I ran that command while loading it. So I've successfully made the exploit that... Um, that's the point. This is a little more work, but it was a real good attack, the Dill proxy. And that's what I wanted to show you. So I'm going to stop this one.